Hey guys, welcome to another VectorMade tutorial. Today I wanted to go over a uh, project that I actually did for a client. Um, they sent uh, several images of this Challenger aircraft and then wanted me to make a vector line drawing of those. And at first I just did a flat line art drawing and then they later came back and said, can you add some three dimension um, gradient effects to it to make it look a little more 3D. So I thought, well, let's kind of go over some uh, different tactics for making that work in the vector uh, art world. And really there's kind of three main things you can do. You can do gradients, which is just, you know, a simple swatch over here um, in your gradient tool, or you might have some in your swatches as well. Usually there's a few. Um, and that's just going from, you know, one color to another color and so on. And you can do lots of different colors inside of a gradient, or you can just do two. Um, then there's also the blend tool, which is this little bad boy over here we'll get to uh, later on. And then you could do the uh, mesh tool, which is this one right over here. Uh, we'll kind of look at all three and just see strengths and weaknesses and, and, you know, various applicabilities of each one. So first, I'll just kind of look at the... Um, gradient tool this I, I went ahead and made a just rectangular gradient and as you can see over here it's a this is my gradient tab it's linear uh, minus 90 degrees if it's 90 it's the same on this one um, just dark gray to white to dark gray right really simple and if I slide this around you know you'll see it change on the shape um, you can also come over to the gradient tool which is this one right here and it will give you this nice little slider. This is probably the best way to do it because you can tell exactly where that color is going to be on your piece of art. It's much easier to gauge these things this way. Um, so this is where the color starts for the dark gray. This is where the color starts for the white. And everywhere in between is going to gradually go from this color to that color. Now this white one over here is, is sort of like how how it's going to blend between the two, right? So um, the default on these is it's going to be 50% in between this one and that one. I think mine's already been changed a little bit, it looks like. But they usually start somewhere in 50% range. You can move this around, and what's cool is the position of this color and this color are not going to change, but the transition is going to change, right? So maybe you want... A nice nice dark edge but you don't want it to stay dark for very long you might push this out really far to that edge you still have a nice dark edge but it's gonna gradually get lighter faster and stay lighter but not be a completely light until this other one right so by contrast let's look over here on this one same thing the edge is completely dark on both sides and it's completely light right here in the middle but it's how it gets from point A to point B that changes based on the position of this little marker right here. So anyway, it's a really powerful tool, easy to set up to do gradients. You just do your gradient tool and you plug in your colors from here. You can pull colors from this swatch library up here, change that out. You can come up here and affect it manually that way um, and make another one, say, like that. So it's really easy to use the gradient tool. Um, very simple but it's also limited so for a shape like this you know it tapers right here and it is widest at this point but it's tapered there and tapered at the back um, you can't really do that with the gradient tool very easily um, you could make it like a radial gradient and then you could see it's radiating from the middle and then you could come in and get your gradient tool and change the way that this radius works that that could do some of this right that could work some but it's kind of limited to just doing something circular or ovular and really you need a custom shape for this piece right here so I went ahead and created one these are just five lines and I'll show you how I did this um, step by step so just come up here and do a pen tool I want to start about the about in the middle somewhere, um, 
actually let's start just a little bit higher than middle and I'll come over here and make that curve kind of a straight line to here and then start curving back we'll stop about about there is good and I'm gonna go ahead and make this blue so you can see it really easily um, then I'll go ahead and make what I want to do is make five lines to get this shape that we're looking for you could do less but you would get a little bit different quality of uh, shape and, and the uh, coloring would be different so for this application I liked five it worked really well um, we'll put one that's right in the middle that goes all the way across just like that and then we're gonna do one more that is probably around about here right in between that comes up to somewhere in this vicinity and comes to about right here okay so I've got the top half and all I need to do is uh, are these grouped no I need to grab these two bring them down so when I do this I'm click shift click and you can see I've got both of these selected now and then when I move I hold down alt to make a copy see what happens when I hit alt see my cursor it goes from one black arrow to a black arrow with a white arrow that just means you're making a copy of that selection you release the click there it is then I'm gonna right click and hit transform reflect and you want to make sure horizontal is checked and preview or vertical if you're doing this 90 degrees tilted you want it to be vertical okay but just make sure preview is selected so you can tell that you've got the right one and then I'll just hit OK and then I'm gonna drag these up to be even flush with that and probably about there maybe not quite so let's see let's move this up just a little bit so that it's right in the middle let me see here that'll work there so I just aligned these so they're all equidistance from each other roughly um, obviously they are a little closer together when they get to the edge but overall they're this is gonna be the same distance from this and same here so now you you've got your lines you come over here and grab your blend tool click on this click on the next line boom it created a line in the middle now if we look at our outline view control Y you can see there's no extra line that's been created here see this isn't there it's just represented as being there but there's not an actual um, vector line that's made yet and we don't have to make one but you could later so I'm going to click on this line and then click on the next line and you will get the same thing and then just repeat this for the next few lines okay now we've got blends from each line to the next but there aren't enough you can see daylight through these um, and what we really want to do is make it to where um, you can't see anything past it so I'm going to select these and I'm going to double click on the blend tool actually before I do that I'm going to make the strokes a little thinner I'm going to make them 0.25 percent because I like for there to be a nice gradual transition and when you have thicker strokes sometimes it's really obvious that you've got a stroke on there so um, you can play with that depending on the size of your blends but anyway back to the blend tool I just double clicked on that you want to select specified steps it's set at one right now preview and let's just start bumping that up I'm pressing shift and the up arrow key there's 10 there's 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 and let's just go one two three four five 150 for good measure so I'll hit OK and you can't see anything now you can't see daylight right but it's all just blue it's all just one color it's hard to kind of tell what we're doing here so with your direct selection tool you can grab the top and bottom lines and come in here and change their color let's do mm, let's do like 90 percent black okay we can start to see the difference here 
and let's select those inner lines and change those to 50% black. Okay. And then that middle line, let's select it and just make it white. And there you go. That's how we get our shape. See that black, or I should say 90% black, edge stays true all the way. But this white part, the highlight of the roundness, it stays consistent throughout. So it's just a really cool way to make a quick shape that looks three-dimensional, um, but it's still vector and really is only made up of five lines. It's just these five lines here. There's nothing else to this. Now you can expand this and make it, uh, you know, 150 lines between here and here and here and here. I mean, you'd have a ton of lines and it would uh, probably eat up some of your memory. Um, depending on the speed of your computer, it might actually slow you down some. Um, so the nice thing about blends is that you can, you know, make a simple shape and make it look like it's more than what it actually is. And then what's really cool is you can come in here and change things um, like I just did where maybe you want this edge to actually be a little bit lighter. Um, so let's bring it to where it's the light edge now. So it looks like it's getting some sunlight maybe on that portion. And then maybe come in here and darken this up a little bit. Something like that maybe. Very different look, you know. So... I did the exact same thing with these engine nacelles. So here's kind of the original. Um, I thought for this this shape, since it didn't taper very much, and the gradient they used was very subtle, as you can see. They wanted just slightly darker edges. That a regular gradient worked just fine. So that's all I did for that one. Very easy. Same thing with this, just a regular gradient. The edge here is just not long enough to really make much of a difference. But for these nacelles, I wanted, or the back part here of the nacelle, I wanted this to be dark all the way down, dark all the way down, and so forth. So that that's what I did. And, and kind of mimicking this original a little bit, you see, I, I wasn't going for exact, but just sort of something like that where this chrome look was was going along the tapered edge. So we just did the same thing. It, all that is is five lines. And then I just change the quality of each line here. So, very simple, very easy. Um, everything else was just, you know, creating shapes and making uh, either solid colors or solid strokes or um, doing some simple gradients. I think the wing here was a simple gradient, kind of tried to match the body. Um, yeah, and this was a gradient a little bit darker figured it's not getting as much light as some of the other parts would. Um, and then we did the top, which looked like this. And a little simple gradient for the windows here. Um, and then I did one with sort of this section cut out that they could place other items that I created, like some, um, oh, these are just representative of other items in there. And then there's a sort of computer desk and a chair that they were, are going to have in these specific um, planes and they could move them around. So I made these all as PNGs for my client. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but you, you kind of get the idea of how that works now um, using the blend tool option. The other thing I want to show is doing a mesh, which is a little more complicated and in my opinion it's just not very reliable. It, it's good. Um, and it could be that I'm just not as good with it. I've seen some people do some amazing things with these mesh tools. Um, but I find it's just a little bit, I don't know, difficult to, to get it just right. And you'll see what I mean. But with this shape, it probably won't be a major uh, issue. But if you get really complicated shapes, it's pretty hard. Um, so here I go. I made another shape uh, of this midsection of the plane here. And... Let's start with something dark, like um, I'll just make it 90% black again. And then come over here to your mesh tool, select that. You'll see a little uh, crosshairs with a plus sign, and that just means you're going to be adding a point wherever you click. So the point placement is really important. If I click here, it creates a 
a funky line here and a funky line there. And we don't want that, and you'll see why in just a sec. I kind of want it to be a, you know, as close to the center as possible, something like that. And then probably one more back here somewhere. So I tried to click on the line that I've already created. If you do this, it's going to create more lines and make it too complicated. I really just want it right there or thereabouts. Um, you can move these around. I'm just using the direct selection tool to just move them around once they're made. The only issue is that like, it creates these anchor points that aren't as easy to move around once you've made the mesh. So point placement's really key to making these work. But let's select this point and this point only. So using the direct selection tool, don't use your regular selection tool because you'll, you'll get everything. You just want to get this point here and this one here. And then come along and slide the color down. And see what that did? Kind of did a similar thing, right? Very, it's similar to this. But you can tell there are some differences here, too. Um, and you can see how this is really, really dark down here, and the lightness doesn't quite persist all the way. Now, you could come in and make another point over here, um, really close to the edge, if you want to, and make that white. And that would help, you know. But then it's still going to have a curved edge here. You could maybe make that white as well. Do something along those lines. That looks pretty good, as you can see. Cool thing about this is you, know, you can come in here and change the way that looks. Now, that's really droopy and funky looking. But you know, just to give you an example of how you can move these points around. You don't have to move the point around either. You could move these um, little handles over here and, and give it a little shape if you want. So there it kind of has a curved effect. Let's accentuate that a bit so you can really see it. See? Heavy curve right, right along that. So it still has the same shape as this midsection, but the, the curve is very different. This one kind of looks like it melted a little, <laughs> you know, or maybe got in an accident of some sort. But uh, th that's a very useful tool when you're wanting to make something um, that has a gradient that isn't perfectly round. But in, and in this situation, it actually works pretty good too because it gives a nice little smooth gradient effect on everything. The other issue with mesh gradients when you use the mesh tool is that this has less editability um, in some places. Um, and I can't remember all those ways, but, but you're want, you might want to go and change some aspect of this and it won't be possible because it's been turned into a mesh object and it's just not as editable once you get to this point so my suggestion is to make a copy of the shapes before you do any mesh just before you ever click this you know make a an object that doesn't have mesh points to it and then work on the, the object that you want to have the mesh to it so Anyway, that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully it was uh, helpful to you guys. Uh, please you know, leave a comment, ask me a question uh, down below. I, I love to get those and I'll answer those. And uh, hit like and subscribe, please, to uh, help me build my channel. All right. Until next time, see you later.